he's putting on his chapstick. Chapstick application complete. <laughs> we talk a lot about sex on this program, but this week we felt it was necessary to take time to address the issue of sexual abuse. Because it's so prevalent, people you know either have been or are being sexually abused. And more often than not, they have not told a soul. Maybe one of those people is you. So join us today for this important edition of Love Ed with Julie and MJ. Now, it's a tough topic, but one we need to tackle as we wrap up our current discussion on sex, which is the final intimacy imposter we have presented in our series, Relationology. And we've already addressed how sex outside of its proper context keeps us from the true intimacy our hearts desire. But up until now, we have been talking about consensual sex. I yeah. want it, she wants it. Congratulations. <laughs> But if choosing to have sex can hurt our ability to relate intimately to those closest to us, then what does having sex forced on you do to somebody? Obviously, it's devastating. And yet, as we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, most of the people suffering from sexual abuse or past sexual abuse uh, suffer in silence. And we can understand that because, like you said, it's so devastating and it can feel shameful. Yeah, but there is hope. And that is the first truth that we have to cling to when, if we're going to deal effectively with sexual abuse. Many people who have been sexually abused have gone on to live happy, healthy lives. We know people like this. A lot of times you feel like I'm the only one. We know people like this, so we already know you aren't. Uh, one of them is my friend Richard Holloman, who started Sight Ministry to help other people suffering from sexual brokenness. And that leads us to the second truth you need to accept if you want to keep sexual abuse from ruining your ability to thrive in relationships. You can't ignore it. No one just gets over being sexually abused. You don't want to just forget it and push it into your past. No, that's what my mom tried to do. And it didn't work out well for no, her. No, she was sexually abused as a child, but hid it from even me and my dad almost her entire life. And that is so common. I remember a mom's group I was in a few years back, and there were three different yeah. women in their 40s just then dealing with the sexual abuse they suffered as children. God, is that how long you want to wait? We understand you want it to just go away, but it's going to end up oozing out eventually, especially in your close relationships. Don't wait. And if you suspect someone might be the victim of sexual abuse, please do not ignore the signs. There's no way around it. It's an ugly, difficult conversation to have. But if left in secrecy, the pain of abuse will breed other destructive behaviors in the victim. Which leads us right into the third truth for dealing with sexual abuse. You're going to need to tell someone. Mm. Look, we all want to know and be known by the people that are important to us, right? That's what our Relationology series has been all about. But how can Julie and I, how can we truly know and be known by each other if either she or I or both of us have sexual abuse in the past that we're not going to talk about? That secret becomes a barrier to the intimacy that we can share. That sin has to be confessed. And if you were abused, it's not your sin. No. It's not your fault. No, no. but when you keep it secret, you are held by the shame of the sin of the perpetrator nonetheless. Sin brings death. The first fruits of that death are called shame. But the antidote to that death is confession. Even if the sin you're confessing isn't your sin, but the sin that was committed against you. Please tell someone with the wisdom and experience who can help you, someone you know and trust. And if you don't know someone like that, then contact us on our website so we can pray for you. Yeah, we're not experts in this area, okay? Mm -mm. But we can mm -hmm. most certainly pray for you, believing that the God who is sovereign over everything, and He is, can direct you to someone who does has, have expertise in this area. And not only that, we can connect you with a ministry like Sight, ministry that can help you also. Uh, you can be healthy and whole no matter the abuse of your past. 
but only if you're willing to walk through the hard work of dealing with what's happened to you. And the first step in doing that is taking the rest to share your pain with someone you know and trust. We hope these three truths will help you to break free from fear and shame so that you can thrive in relationships. Which is the whole point of our series on Relationology. And we only have one more video left in our Relationology series, so join us next week for more on Love Edge with Julie and MJ. Love Edge with Julie and MJ.